Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and this is Medicated Housewife DIY where crafting and mental health come together. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. And thank you to my new subscribers. I really appreciate you being here. In today's DIY video, I'm just not done with pumpkins. So we're going a little glitzy and high end here with some Mackenzie Childs inspired pumpkins. I just love the colorful and whimsical Mackenzie Childs designs. And we're gonna make some using Dollar Tree foam pumpkins. It's very exciting, so stick around and let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. For this Dollar Tree Fall Crafts Mackenzie Childs Inspired Pumpkin DIY, to begin with, I am using the Dollar Tree Foam Pumpkins, as well as these two cute little white pumpkins that I found at the Target Dollar Spot for $3 each. I just really love their stems. Um, they do have some lettering on them, but since I'm painting all the pumpkins to begin with, that really just doesn't matter to me. So I'm prepping all the pumpkins for painting and I am going to prime all of them with my Waverly White chalk paint. I use two coats of paint just as a primer and I plan on using both the Target White pumpkins and only one of the Dollar Tree foam ones, but I'm painting all of them just in case that I need them. So all my primer is dry and I'm starting with my first pumpkin. It's one of the slightly smaller Target ones. And I'm duping one of the Mackenzie Childs pumpkins that's covered in these turquoise and gold little raised nubs, which incidentally costs about a hundred bucks. And I'm going to try to replicate that for a lot less. I got these self-adhesive flat back pearls in assorted sizes on Amazon, which I will link in the description box below. They come stuck to a sheet and I'm going to glue them onto the pumpkin all over each section in graduating sizes. Even though these pearls are self-adhesive, the adhesive part of them is pretty iffy and unreliable, which is always the case with self-adhesive. I don't know what that's about. So anyway, I choose to use them with glue. I'm using regular tacky glue and because some of the pearls are really tiny, I'm using a toothpick to apply the glue onto them. It did take me a while to get a groove going while gluing these on. I did change my strategy with the gluing several times. You'll see that. I did eventually get a good rhythm going though. I'm starting with the smaller pearls on the top and graduating to larger pearls down to the middle and then tapering down to the smaller pearls again toward the bottom of the pumpkin. For this first pumpkin, I glued the pearls down first and I painted them later. However, you will see in the second pumpkin that I choose to paint the pearls and the pumpkin first and then glue the pearls onto the pumpkin. That works much better and you will see that later on. Now, just to interrupt for a second, I realized early on that I was gonna need some kind of cording or edging to fill in all the ridges for each of the pumpkins and I looked for something in my stash, and then I saw like 20 feet of this telephone landline wire just sitting in my basement collecting dust. And I got that little idea light bulb over my head, and I thought that would be the perfect thing to use for cording. All I had to do was paint it. Talk about upcycling. I mean, who even uses their landline anymore anyway? So people, grab those old landline phone cords and let's cut them up and use them for DIYing. Who's with me? This was probably the greatest revelation of the whole project. So if you take nothing else away from this, do try using these phone cords. I had to cut them to size and they did take two to three coats of the paint for full coverage, but they worked out great as you'll see later in the video. Now it's time to paint our first pumpkin and I'm going to alternate two colors for this. A nice bright and glossy turquoise and a light metallic gold, which by the way is my personal favorite color combo. I love, love, love turquoise and gold. Those two colors are all over my house, my clothes, they're everywhere. 
It also just so happens that the Mackenzie Child's pumpkin that inspired this was also turquoise and gold, so I was very excited for this one. I painted a stripe of turquoise followed by the next section in gold, trying my best to cover all the pearls, which is another reason why my second pumpkin that you'll see later came out a little better, because I pre-painted both the pumpkin and the pearls. It's not easy getting full coverage over these pearls, and this definitely took two to three coats to achieve that, so just keep that in mind. The second pumpkin, which is also one of the Target smaller white pumpkins, is going to be another pearl encrusted pumpkin. But as I stated before, I pre-painted all the pearls and the pumpkin this time around. This one is going to be alternate striped in an apple barrel gloss beige called Beachcomber Beige and a folk art treasure gold metallic in the color rose gold. At this point, I had already painted the sheets of self-adhesive pearls, also in those two same colors. I did three coats of each of these colors because I wanted to be sure I got full and glossy coverage on the pumpkins, but the pearls, I only did two coats of paint because that's all they really needed. So still working on the second pumpkin, I have my pre-painted pearls in beige and rose gold, and I have my fabulous telephone wire cording painted in the same rose gold. The first thing I'm gonna do is to glue the cording down onto the crevices that divide the pumpkin into sections. Okay, so do any of you know what the different parts of the pumpkin are actually called? What is the real name for those ribs in the pumpkin, the raised part and the indented part? I I'm just hoping you guys are understanding what I'm referring to in this video when I explain where to put stuff. I know I call them crevices or ribs or indentations, but please, in the comments below, someone enlighten me and the rest of us as to what the correct term is for all these pumpkin parts. What's the anatomy of a pumpkin? Inquiring minds want to know. To attach the cording to the pumpkin, at first I used hot glue, but I am here to tell you not to do what I did. Do not use the hot glue. I ended up having to redo all the cording with some Starbond glue, which worked like a charm, just perfectly. So learn from my mistakes and use the Starbond to glue your cording from the beginning. 30 seconds for the glue to set and you're done. It's a dream. Moving on, still pumpkin number two, I'm going to glue the painted pearls onto the painted pumpkin. Rose gold pearls get glued onto the rose gold painted section and the beige pearls are glued onto the beige painted section. And I don't know if I mentioned it before, but each pumpkin section has rows of four pearls going across, as you can see on the finished sections. You can see in this part of the video that I really got my groove going on the gluing at this point. I'm still using the tacky glue and the toothpick, but now I'm dabbing the glue directly onto the pumpkin and then placing the pearl on top of it. This makes it go faster. It's kind of like an assembly line style. I'm using the graduating sizes directly from the sheet of pearls to organize my placement of the pearls onto my pumpkin. Larger toward the middle of the pumpkin and then using leftover pearls under the largest ones in the middle of the pumpkin to taper the size back down again toward the bottom. I'm not explaining it as simply as it actually is, so hopefully you can see what I mean by watching it. This third pumpkin is the last one and I'm using the Dollar Tree foam pumpkin that's been primed already. This one is gonna be more of a traditional Mackenzie Child's black and white stripe design, but I will be adding some of my own flair to it. I am using an acrylic gloss white paint and an acrylic gloss black paint to paint the stripes. I do about three or maybe even four coats because it's supposed to be glossy and these Dollar Tree foam pumpkins have a definite orange peel kind of texture that I'd really like to cover up as much as possible. Next, I'm going to glue our telephone wire cording onto the black and white pumpkin. 
I painted these cords with folk art treasure gold metallic acrylic paint in the color gold, which is a little bit more antique gold looking. I love the way the cord looks. It even looks like it could be a metal band or something like that. I'm very happy with it. So having learned my hot glue lesson already, I attach the cord with Starbond glue and it attaches with no problem. Still working on our black and white pumpkin, I bought this leaf mold and some air dry clay on Amazon. I will link them for you in the description box below. I have no experience with clay, you guys, but I was up for the challenge. I wanted to use the maple leaf part of the mold to make some leaves that I could attach to the top of my pumpkin. I dusted the inside of the mold with some cornstarch as I've seen other people do and I made seven of the maple leaves plus some extra because you just never know. Then after removing each leaf from the mold I laid it out to dry on a spare Dollar Tree pumpkin because I want them to dry in a curved shape so that they'll lay perfectly on top of the black and white pumpkin when I go to glue them down. After making them, I let them dry on the pumpkin for at least 24 hours, although mine was closer to 48 hours. So when all my leaves are dry, I paint them with that same folk art gold color as the telephone cord, that antique kind of gold color, and then set them aside to dry. Once the gold leaves have dried, I use a dry paintbrush and some Waverly antique wax and run the brush over the edges and the little nooks of the leaves. This gives that some, some depth and some dimension and then I set them aside to dry. Instead of using a regular stem, I felt like this black and white pumpkin can use something more regal looking. So I grabbed a large wood bead and a small wooden knob that I had in my stash. But I've seen these knobs at like Hobby Lobby and Michaels. I used some glossy black acrylic paint to paint the bead. And then I used that same antique looking gold paint to paint the knob gold with a little tiny band of red at the bottom of the knob. I think I did two coats on each and then I let it all fully dry. Lastly, I glued those gold leaves onto the top of my pumpkin and I did end up using an extra leaf that I thankfully had already made because you never know. I used my Starbond glue to glue the leaves. I also should mention that I used glossy Mod Podge all over everything, all three pumpkins at the end because the whole Mackenzie Child's vibe, I think, is glossy. For the two pearled pumpkins, I used the original stem that was still attached to the pumpkin. All I did for them was to take a black Sharpie and line a little black twist around the white stem. And this is how my Mackenzie Childs inspired pumpkins turned out. So many surprises for me in this. I love the rose gold and beige pearled pumpkin. And for all you tactile people out there, it is super fun to touch, I'm just saying. The black and white with the gold leaves, I'm in love with it. Those leaves are amazing, and frankly, I can't wait to use that mold and that clay again. The gold and turquoise were admittedly my least favorite, and I thought that it would be my favorite because of the colors, but it's still pretty cool looking. Which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to show you all a little peek at the originals where I got my inspiration from here. And then back to my versions. All in all, I do think my pumpkin journey has come to an end, at least for this year. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this Medicated Housewife DIY. And if you'd like to see more DIYs, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm the Medicated Housewife and crafting is my medication.